Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bravely Second. So we started chapter 3 last episode, we got a good way into it, partly because the dialogue was like 25 minutes long at the end there, but um, let's go ahead and just continue right where we left off. Um, we got the Flower Festival done with, Alternus and the Dio won that. And there was that last little part where there was a dude speaking. And that brings the 48th Moonish. Sacred Flower Festival of Florum to a close. Thanks to all who took part, and take care on your way home, everyone. Well, today's just been full of surprises. I was quite taken aback as well, if not entirely displeased with the outcome. Excusez-moi, vous avez une minute? Oui, qu'est-ce que c'est? So you do understand me? Yes, I do. But who are you? He's speaking Magnolia's language, but how? Could he also be... Ah, uh, I beg your pardon. I didn't mean to startle you. I couldn't help but overhear your remarks on stage. You were speaking the language of the Sagita. The who what -a? The Sagita. We are a humble tribe, but one with a mission. Defeat the destroyer from the heavens, Baal. We live deep within the forest of Florum, far from the eyes of the people. Alavash! You also battled the balls? Yes. Since my father's time, my father's fathers, and all who came before me. We live in isolation, so that the technology we wield against our enemy does not fall into the wrong hands. Interaction with the outside world is kept to a minimum. So you can imagine my surprise to hear you speaking the Sejita tongue. Tell me, how did you come to know it? That's what I wanted to ask you. This is my language, the language of the moon. What's this you say? You come from the moon? This is quite the turn of events. If you would, pray come and speak with our elder. Surely you have questions for us as well. What do you say? An exchange of information? Right. You can tell us about the moon, and we can tell you about that beam of light, for instance. <gasps> you! I heard him. Now we have to go. But what if the Empire comes pounding on Florum's door again? I'll speak with the Matriarch about shoring up the city's defenses. In the meantime, count on me to watch over Florum. You're the best, Alternus. All right, monsieur. Will you show us the way to your village? But of course. If you would just lend me your map, mademoiselle, uh... Magnolia. Enchanté. Moi de même. I am Lotus, engineer of the Sagita. Okay. Okay, we have <clears throat> a side quest, which you, you guys know, always do side quests first. Yeah, side quest first, always. Gracious me, what an outrage! Can I not even eat dessert in peace? I thought four servings of cake was enough, ma'am. Now, if you please. Of course, of course, I'm just so busy with everyone pulling me in every direction. I'm starting to get motion sickness. Well then, what's on the agenda for today? Now then, your inspection of the Twilight Ruins in the feasibility study for the new school... Oh, no, 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 no! An inspection and that blasted study? There would need to be two of me to do it all. They work me to the bone, I say. To the bone! It's exploitation, that's what it is. They think they're going to dump all this work on me? Alone? Ah, I think not! You! You there! Huh? I hereby name you Florum's Interim Superintendent of Education! Effective immediately! Hetty, do see that all the necessary paperwork is filed. Yes, ma'am. Super and what? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure... Now that that's taken care of, since I am so passionate about Luxendark's cultural heritage, I will go to the ruins. While you survey people about the new school, your stocky little legs look well suited to tromping about the town, at least. Chop chop! Hold on, lady. I don't know you from a bowl of gravy, but... Shush, shush, shush! Zip those lips and move those hooves! Oh, 
don't worry, dear. Everyone is nervous their first time. Take heart. I believe in you. <laughs> we'll be taking our leave then. I'll be waiting for your report. Yes, ma'am. My word, what a powerful figure. She's like a force of nature. Just wait a minute. I still don't even know who any of you people are. The esteemed personage you just met is Miss Ursula U. Duet, Chancellor of Education from Al Campus. I am Hetty Steady, one of her administrative assistants. A pleasure to meet you. Uh, and what is this job she just dumped on me? Chancellor Duet has delegated to you the vital task of overseeing all matters of education here in Florum. It's an honor, Superintendent Lee. I'm a flash! Moving up in the world, aren't we now? I had no idea you were so passionate about education, idiot. <sighs> Laugh all you want, guys. Let's just get this over with. What am I supposed to survey or whatever? The Alcampus Ministry of Education is planning to open a new academy right here in Florum. We are conducting a thorough survey of the populace to determine what sort of school might best serve their needs. That sounds pretty vague. Can't you just give me like a yes or no question? Indeed. Let us start with the question of whether or not the campus should be co-educational. Okay, so I'll find out if people want one school for everyone, or separate schools for girls and boys. Then I'm done, right? Not exactly. We already did a preliminary survey. The results being... 10 in support of a co-educational system, 10 in support of single-sex education, and 40 with no particular preference. If you already did the survey, then what do you need me for? I okay, okay. So what should I do? Find out more about the co-ed supporters and naysayers? That would be a suitable place to start. The leaders of each faction are both teachers here in town. We would appreciate it if you could listen to their arguments and render a decision. Will you speak with them? I don't see what choice I've got. Lead the way. I'd be delighted to, if you would just follow me to the city's upper level. That is where we will find the leader of the anti-coed faction. One Ms. Rhea Veeling. Okay, where is this... Upper? It's just over here? They didn't mark it as blue, so I'm kind of confused. Oh, up here, okay. Stand with us against co-education! Don't allow these outsiders to come in and muddy our good morals! Take a stand against co-education! So that's the leader of the group that wants separate education? That is correct. Ms. Rhea Veeling. She may come from academia, but many say she has political aspirations. What's with the dowdy old dribble, eh? No one wants to see you out here, you saggy old hag! This is the era of gender equality. Co-education is the only way to the future. Equal opportunities for men and women. One school for men and women. And that's the leader for the co-ed supporters? Quite so. Mr. Sweaty Tracksuit. He was hired just this spring as an interim physical education instructor. That mask looks awfully familiar. There you are, and in that grubby tracksuit, no less. Today's the day we win this debate once and for all. Dream on! Just you try with those old-fashioned ideals of yours. Huh. It would seem your awareness of the times is rivaled only by your impeccable fashion sense. <laughs> Look! Forum isn't just for women any longer. Haven't you heard of the Equal Rights Act? It's the law, you old bag! So men and women have equal rights. Why should that mean they have to study together, hmm? Men and women are different, and there's no denying that. Why should they have to do everything exactly the same way? Oh, come off it! What's so different about us? 
We wear different clothing. We show our emotions differently. We even use different toilets. It's like comparing this impeccable couture skirt of mine to a stinky threadbare tracksuit. Huh. Just shows what you know. I bet my tracksuit costs more than your entire outfit, and it actually covers my legs. And the whole world thanks you for that. Some sights can never be unseen, after all. Anyhow, there is simply no reason why girls and boys should have to study together. Why, even if we were to adopt your proposal, the female-to-male ratio would be nearly 70 to 1! So why don't we just set up a boys' school in some big, stinky swamp somewhere? I dare say you'd be right at home. Why, you nasty old... You expect boys to enjoy that kind of school life? Where's the passion? The romance? Passion? Romance? Oh, oh, school is a place for education, for study. Ha! Shows what you know. Romance might be the single most important part of a student's life. Young boys and girls sitting across from each other in the classroom, stealing glances. That's all a part of education. The bittersweet taste of first love is what being young is all about. Not that an old maid like you would know anything about that. Oh! Who are you calling an old maid? Ah, oh, I think I've heard enough. I'd better stop this before they sink any lower with their insults. Could I have a minute of your time? Why, you, 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 you're Idiot Lee! Huh, I thought I knew that mask. Hi, ma'am. Sweaty tracksuit, formerly of the Attorney and Sky Knights. At your service. I do remember your mask, but I'm afraid that's all I remember. Oh, that's all right. It's only natural. I left the Sky Knights two years ago due to an injury and returned to my home to help out. That's when I went back to school, you see. Last year, I finally got my teacher's license. It was a dream come true. And that's when you came to Florham? That's right. If I may ask, what brings you here, ma'am? Miss Lee is Florham's new superintendent of education. She's here to make an important decision about the new school. Oh, amazing! Daughter of the Grand Marshal, Knights nice Captain of the Ducal Guard, and now a superintendent, too! Superintendent Lee. Would you give it a rest, Tiz? So, why are you so gung-ho about co-education? What drove you to be the leader of this movement? Uh, I guess I just wanted to make this new school into something like the Sky Knights. Like the Sky Knights? Yes, ma'am. In the Sky Knights, I served alongside both men and women. Everyone laughing and working together. Sure, we didn't always see eye to eye. Sometimes we even came to blows. But we were always there for each other. I want every young person to be able to experience that kind of camaraderie. That's my real dream. I've even thought of a name for the new school. How about the Florham Academy of Passion and Pedagogy? That's certainly a name. I like it. Mm-hmm. The Florham School of Burning Passion and Pecs. Huh? What in the world? Greetings, little friend. It's been far too long, I'd say. You, what was your name again? Tracksuit, sir. Sweaty tracksuit. I was under your direct command, sir. Oh, ho, ho. And if it ain't Idia. How you been, girly? G great Thanks, Barris. What an imposing friend you have, Idia. Aren't you going to introduce us? He was one of the helmsmen of the Sky Knights, a main division of the Eternian forces. That's right! Feast your eyes on this! You're looking at the legendary warrior, Barris Lair! <laughs> 
Barris Lair, the beast in the ring, holder of the Monk Asterisk. He served briefly alongside Idia in their time as members of the Eternian Sky Knights, a born brawler who lives for the sound of flesh hitting flesh. He has a rugged charm, despite his coarse and vulgar nature. By what strange trick of fate do your paths cross anew? So, what are y'all standing around here yammering about, huh? Let me in on the action. W would you be willing to join the cause, sir? We could definitely use your support. Hmm. I really don't get what you're so worked up about, but you just want me to say I'm on your side, right? That good? What? Uh, yes, sir. To elaborate. The Sky Knights inspired me to create a learning environment unbound by traditional notions of gender and... Yeah, yeah, sounds good. I'll leave the pesky details to you, kid. I'm on your side! Whatever it is you want to do. Bet you're feeling pretty lucky right about now, huh? Huh? Who wouldn't? I'm planning to stick around town for a while, so give a holler if you need me. See ya, tracksuit! Why do I get the feeling he has no idea what he just agreed to? I have a bad feeling about all this. Again. Well, Superintendent Lee, shall we go hear what Miss Veeling has to say next? Where did the other lady go? <clears throat> After I'd gone to such lengths to hide my past in the Duchy's armed forces. Fine, I'll confess. You forced it out of me. I know you've come all this way to track me down. Uh, no, that's really not. Three years ago, I came with the Blood Rose Legion to corrupt this nation and its people. True, I was only following orders. But still... I knew I had to do something to atone for my crimes, and so I dedicated myself to education. Yes, with this! Education for the educationally challenged! Get your teaching license in just 30 days with our patented method! I studied until I sweat blood, and finally, finally, I became a teacher in this country! Florum is a heavenly nation indeed! Full of natural beauty and blessed with a sensitive and gentle-hearted citizenry. I want to preserve its beauty and harmony for generations to come. That is why I teach the girls here as I do. Such noble resolve. Yes, it has touched me to my core. Oh, Einheria? Einheria Venus. Unrelenting warrior and holder of the Valkyrie Asterisk. Eldest of the Venus Sisters, and part of the Blood Rose Legion with whom Idia and her friends did battle. Having studied the sword under the same master, she is more than a match for Idia in strength of both body and will. By what strange trick of fate do your paths cross anew? Well, did she just jump out of the sky? I take it this is another of your acquaintances, Idia? I'm afraid so. The Valkyrie Einheria Venus. We studied together under Master Kami Izumi. What are you doing back here in Florum? Why, for my training, of course. Why else? <sighs> Never the model warrior. Don't you ever relax? Uh, Commander Einheria! Yes? You were one of my soldiers, weren't you, Miss, um... Veeling! Maria Veeling! It was my pleasure to serve, ma'am! Your efforts on this nation's behalf, they have made a deep impression on me. Seeing your deeds makes me proud to call myself your former commander. The... the... the honor is mine! So let me get this straight. To preserve Florum's beauty and harmony, you think boys and girls should be taught separately? Precisely. I would not deny men equal rights. But why should boys and girls have to learn together? Miss Lee here is the acting superintendent of education. If you have an opinion about the new school, please share it. 
I believe I've made my feelings clear. Oh, but I have thought of a possible name for the school. What would you think of this? St. Florius Academy for Girls! Yeah, that'll make boys feel real welcome. A fine name. Elegant and dignified. I wish I'd thought of it myself. We must do whatever we can to see that your ideas are heard. The future of this nation's educational system is at stake. Yes, ma'am! It looks like we'll be seeing a lot of each other from now on, Idia. It's good to have you on our side. Till we meet again, comrades! No, wait! Now then, Miss Lee, you have heard both sides' opinions. What is your decision? <clears throat> if it's okay, I'd like to make my report directly to the Chancellor. Certainly, Miss Lee. Chancellor Duet is currently visiting the Twilight Ruins. You will find her in the Western Village there. I trust you will think things over very carefully before rendering your decision. Okay, so... Um, what we can basically pick here is the Monk or the Valkyrie class. If I fight the Monk, it's a separated school. If I fight the Valkyrie, uh, it's a co-ed school. And I think you guys, well, most of you would probably know what I pick. Maybe not. I'm just saying random things at this point. I am going to be fighting the Valkyrie, partly because I think, I, I genuinely do think the co-ed school is a better idea, just in general. I think the more experience in life just equals more uh, opportunity, just in general. Yes, boys and girls learn differently, but they can learn differently together. Not that big of an issue. But also because I want the Valkyrie class over the monk. I absolutely love the monk. Only problem with it is the class bores me to death. I used it a lot last game, and it just bored me. And I'm trying to have fun, but it bored me. And the Valkyrie, I used it at the end, I actually finished the game with the Valkyrie, and I think I have a cool, I might have a cool setup with the Valkyrie in the night, so um, we'll see where this goes. But either way, harder puzzles at us right away. That is not the case here. Let's just go grab our chest here. Okay, 2,000 pig. Pretty useful. Not going to be that useful once we get to Tomshire and we basically get unlimited money. But let's just make our way through this dungeon here. What level am I? So we're 34 to 38 and we're all almost 40. So we're not crazy over leveled, but we're definitely over leveled. Okay, I got to go back and get that chest actually. I was hoping there'd be like some like cut off, but apparently that wasn't the case. Let's go ahead and grab this one. I have to reclose this door here. Yeah, some of these dungeons are gonna just be a little annoying because their animations take forever, but the thing I missed was I could probably buy a new katana for Magnolia. That's really about it. Also, I looked at each individual player's stats and I kind of made the wrong decision as far as their characters. I just I thought it, uh, Magnolia would be a physical type character. She's actually not. She's best at, uh, she's best utilized as a mage, which surprised me quite a bit. Um, so, maybe eventually I'll switch Tiz to a physical and have Magnolia switch to something. I kind of want to switch all of my people around, I'm just going to be honest. Um, so let's go ahead and open this one. Yeah, I feel like... Maybe at some point at, at the maybe at the end of this chapter, I'm just gonna go ahead and like switch a bunch of people around. What does this close? Is the real question. Oh, close the one behind me. Yeah, like I feel like I'm gonna wanna. I mean, there's a few strategies that I wanna employ. Like I know there's the three ghost plus one guardian or knight strategy with meteor rain. Um, but I could technically do meteor rain even without that ghost, you know. Um, let's see, where was I going here? The other strategy that I just thought of myself was maybe three Valkyries and a knight. Have the knight with, obviously, like, well, what am I doing here? This needs to stay open. I'm just talking and losing my mind at this point. And then having the knight, obviously, having extreme physical, you know, defense. Uh, but also having, um... 
yeah, like, basically, Tiz would be a great knight here because he has the white mage. I just turn him into a knight, so he'd have those healing abilities while also being a knight. Um, but he would lose all of the good... Or I guess he would be better as a bishop at that point, right? Because he would have that full heal ability, which would be better. Honestly? Oh, also, this is something I just thought of here. Oh, I kind of want to get him to black level 6, but I also... I think I... I maybe took him off a wizard a bit too early. I'll do that. I just made up my mind this, this exact second. I'll just let them both get to that level... And then maybe I'll then switch them back to the original. Just because I want these subclasses to be real good, you know. We have 26 minutes here at recording. Okay, what do I do here? Let's just go through it. Also, if you didn't notice, I do have my encounters off. Just because I am a little overleveled. If I want to grind, the grinding is something that I do off camera. You guys already know this throughout my series. Um, the fighting enemies is like part of the game, but... You guys just want to see the game, so I'll sh you know, I don't think that fighting portion is very good or very super entertaining to watch. And anyway, you know, I I do show it just in the grinding portions, but I want to separate the the grinding portions from the dungeon portions. Go ahead and open this. Also, especially with um, dungeons like this where there's a lot of like moving walls and you have to run back and forth. Um. I like to just not have enemies, just while I'm doing this dungeon itself. Okay, and then we can open this one. What does this do? Okay, so that opens that door. Oh, and this takes us over here. Bang, that's completely useful, useless to me, I don't have a camp answer. And that should open that door, and then we go around, and we're good. You love to see it. Okay, let's go run all the way back around. And we should be good. Run down here. Grab this chest. Artisan gloves. Just real quick. What are those? What is what are the what is the artisan gloves? Is it dexterity? Okay, nothing useful right at the moment. Let's just continue where we left off. Let's go to the next level of the ruins here. I don't know how many we've, how many levels we've got here, but okay. Let's go check out this area first. All right. Let's switch open this door so I can just grab that little shiny thing, and then we'll go from there. So let's grab this. Okay, 980 ping. A little bit of an unusual number. Instead of a thousand or 980. 980. That is the exact amount. So let's open that door. We'll leave that one open. We'll open this yellow. So I'm guessing I have to do this right side to open up the left side. Which is a pretty easy puzzle if you're, if you're telling me. Okay, light curtain. So now if we close, open that one, close this one. Yeah, these, these puzzles really aren't hard if you just have, like, just, like, a tiny bit of, like, awareness of, like, how the maps look. You can almost tell exactly what they want you to do. So now we can go ahead and, um, yep, open that one. Literally not hard at all. Um, now we have to close this one. Here we go around. No problem. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah, these, these puzzles are definitely not hard. If you're, like, eight, you know, they might be a tiny bit challenging. They might confuse your little brain, but... Ooh, okay. What are we at? 30? Okay, let's go ahead and do this tent. Tent event, and then... We'll... So, Idia, I understand you studied the sword with Einheria. But what about this Barris person? He's from Eternia, too, we? Yeah. How many years ago was it when we first met? I remember it was... Just after I joined Master's school, that winter, Eternia was full of talk of an abominable snowman. Supposedly it was prowling the western corridor and ambushing unwary travelers. So I decided to go and deal with it myself. How old were you then? Ten? Twelve? Old enough to handle a sword, I can say that. 
What? Nobody tried to stop you? Sure, they tried, but I was having none of it. I even convinced Alternus to come with me. Convinced? Or forced? Anyway, we headed straight for the Western Corridor. But Einharia caught us before we got there. She'd been sent to bring me back. Alternus tried to help me get away, but Einharia got the jump on him, and my little game was over. <laughs> oh, you should have heard me whine. Einharia couldn't wait to get me back to town. But after all the running around and chasing, we were pretty exhausted, all three of us. That's when the blizzard hit. <gasps> the world turned white. We could barely see, and then a giant figure slowly emerged. The abominable snowman! He knocked out Einharia before she knew what hit her. Alternus moved to protect me, but soon he too was on the ground, unconscious. Then it was my turn. I... I don't know how much time passed. I awoke inside a cave, warmed by a small campfire. When I looked around me, I saw Einharia on the ground, and also Alternus, battered and beaten. Then I heard the thud, thud of heavy footsteps, and a giant shadow loomed across the cave wall. The abominable snowman! I knew it had come to eat us, but I didn't even have the strength to stand. I trembled in terror as the giant slowly turned and bared its gruesome fangs at me. <laughs> Yikes! Ah! Then, I passed out again. Several days later, I was kneeling on the floor in fencing class, getting a real dressing down from Master. Father had already given me a spanking I wouldn't soon forget. It still stings just thinking about it. Wow, so, uh, you made it out alive. Well, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here telling you the story, would I? Well, so, what happened to the, uh, abominable snowman? Let me guess. It was actually Barris, right? What? What? Barris was the abominable snowman? Don't be silly. Sir Heinkel had ordered Barris to chase the monster away. Whew, that's a relief. But there really was an abominable snowman? Kind of. As it turned out, it was just an ice golem that had escaped captivity. It had knocked us out before we could get a good look at it. But Barris showed up and drove it off before it could do any real damage. Huh. Then after, in the cave... It was Barris who carried us there, to keep us warm and treat our wounds. So the second time you passed out, that was Barris? Yeah, that really cheesed him off. I just grinned at you and you conked out like I was some hulking beast, he said. I guess it hurt his feelings or something. Maybe he's more sensitive than he looks. Every time he saw me, every time, he'd bring up how I fainted at the sight of him. Anyway, he and Alternus ended up as good friends. And Einharia joined Master's school to study the spear. I guess you could say it was the abominable snowman who brought us all together. Anyhow, those two are impossible to talk to. <laughs> what was it they say? Birds of a feather? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Okay, a little backstory on those two characters, which is fun. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it a quick save here and probably end the episode, guys. Um, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure you like and comment on this channel, and I'll see you guys later. God bless, and goodbye.